What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today of Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. First of all, I want to say guys, I hope you had a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. I had a great time with my family. It's awesome to be here with you. I had about the last two days off and I was just really missing talking with everybody. So it's great to be back here today. Looks like yesterday I really wasn't paying much attention to the charts, but it looks like we had one of those fake out breakouts. And this was from an area that I was looking at on Friday. And what we were looking for is to stay up above the support area of 6,771. And we were also trying to break through the resistance of 6,946. So what you see here is, guys, we were almost in, this is on the one hour time frame right now. We were almost in like a bear flag where we had a sharp pull drop down. And then we were moving sideways while the volume was drying up after having a sharp volume drop out of a trend line break so what we were looking at here is that sideways movement and then what happened was in my opinion we had a manipulated move to the upside here and as you can see we had one of these just massive busted patterns or throwbacks because guys we made it all the way up to almost seventy two hundred dollars and then what you can see is here we had heavier volume right up here right around where we had all these spinning tops and we had dojis and we had a lot of indecision in that area so you could see that we couldn't even hold seven thousand dollars as support and we actually ended up dropping down to about sixty five hundred dollars so just overnight we almost lost a thousand dollars in that range and what you can see is the volume profile now the heavy impulse moves are negative they're to the downside and then our reactive moves they're on less volume right now and then you see this downside move right here how heavy the volume is then we just had a little reaction up and look how empty the volume is so this is definitely a downtrend that we're dealing with right now guys we need to be very careful because now we're at that spot where we have six thousand seven hundred seventy one dollars acting as overhead resistance for us and that's how these things go in a downtrend you're gonna have that huge impulse of volume and then you're gonna actually have the volume dry up while you have your reaction and then you're gonna have a huge impulse of volume then it's gonna dry up it's the opposite of in a bull market where when you're getting pushed up you're gonna have that big swell of volume and then when you have the sell-offs the volume is going to be empty or it's going to be lower that's what you're always paying attention to so right now guys and the reason why I got out of my position at this trend line break is because trend line breaks are extremely valid and if we take a look at this here and we go from this trend line break down to where we went that's 10% you could save yourself and in my opinion when I see a trend line broken one that's been established that we have one two three four five we had six touches off this Think about that. We had six touches off this and we broke to the downside. So that's telling you that the trend is down. And that's what you have to pay attention to because we are no longer putting in those higher lows. And that's something that's extremely important for us to keep on our radar. So this was on the one hour time frame. That's where I like to play, guys. What I want to actually do now, we're going to work our way back. We're going to go to the four hour time frame. Then we're going to go all the way back out to the one day time frame as well and take a look at what's going on here. <clears throat> So let's take a look at our four hour time frame. With our four hour time frame here, we are now below this 50 moving average that we had previously gotten up above. You can see we had a close up above it here, and then we just fell right through the, the basement right there, guys. And that's how these things happen. There's times when you can have perfect confirmation of buying a moving average. The moving averages are starting to go up. It's a bullish candlestick pattern, and it closes up above the 50, and typically that's when you'd want to take a position. And in this space, guys, there's so many fake outs and breakouts. Look at this one right here. A beautiful move to the upside. We made up to about seven thousand dollars then we dropped all the way down to fifty six hundred dollars in the matter of 12 hours I mean that's just this space and that's how aggressive this space is both to the upside and the downside but it's definitely something that you need to be aware of and you need to pay attention to it's extremely important for us but what we also had here a lot of times when you break down through trend lines you can actually try to come back up and back test them and that's what this may have been just a little fake out breakout back test of this before we potentially start moving farther down to the downside there so that's definitely something I'm gonna keep my eye on here in the coming days next what I want to do is go out to the one day time frame we'll take a look at this so with our one day time frame now we had our death cross that took place our 50 cross down through our 200 and what you can also see here guys is we had this trend line break and we had a valid candle close below it and that valid candle close now, that put us right at support. And that was about $6,800, which we needed to hold. And then you can see we attempted 
another time here we had a doji candle so a lot of fight a lot of indecision here and then we had almost like a long leg doji here where we went up to that 50 moving average but we saw rejection off it and then we started to get pushed back to the downside again so now guys in this break looking at the four hour time frame we may look down to even sixty two hundred dollars to see if we can find support or even down here around that six thousand dollar range and that's how aggressive these breaks can get out of a trend line break and also if we take a look at our fibonacci here and we go from our high to our low you can see all this rejection took place at the 50 moving average as well as at 0.618 so that's a hot spot area for us we had a death cross we have the 50 acting as overhead resistance on us we had a trend line break and we also ran into that 0.618 which is common so we had our big fall and we had our reaction back up to that 0.618 and a lot of times after the 0.618 you can fall back to the 0.382 that's always something that we have to keep our eye on as well there and you can tell that volume trend is down right now so guys in my opinion this is an area i would not want to be taking along right now there's just so much going against us right now and until i see you know maybe even some support at fifty eight hundred dollars a bullish reversal candlestick pattern with some heavier volume and, and and some type of indicator you know that's that's what i would look for but right now i would not want to be going long in this market that's just me i would rather protect myself so if you get something from that, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, guys. Next one we're going to go into is Litecoin. So like I said, I am not in a position right now. I'm waiting for a great buying opportunity, and right now is not that buying opportunity. That's not what I'm looking for. So let's go into Litecoin. We're at $40 right now. And with Litecoin, same deal here. Do you see we're having a trend line break, this green trend line. We have lost that now. We also lost that critical $41.96 because we are in ascending triangle. We pushed up, and what we actually had was one of those throwbacks, but now we're actually breaking down through the top of this. So if we break down through the top of this, that can almost be considered a busted pattern if it continues in this direction. And same deal, what's tough, we have this 50 moving average pressing over top of us right now. We have the death cross. We have our 200 acting as overhead resistance, and now we're starting to lose in purple this 20 moving average. So for me, if I'm looking at support, I would look down at around $37 as an area we put, potentially could go. Then it'd be around $35. Then it'd be about $33.16. And then it'd be down around, we'll call it $30 even, are gonna be my downside targets. In each area, I'm gonna look for potential buy areas if I'm seeing those things, if I'm seeing a bullish candlestick reversal, if I'm seeing heavier volume in that area, if I see those bulls stepping in, then that's a different story. But right now, guys, everything is down and what you could even do just looking at this right now I'm not sure if it'll work out or not you can almost draw just a little rough trend line right along here and what you can see is that we need to break out from this downtrend as we've been looking at it. we have at least two touches there so this, this is definitely a valid trend line in green here so we would need to break out up through that and that would help get rid of this downtrend and we need to start setting higher highs and higher lows but right now you know guys this just isn't the most promising and if we go into the four hour time frame on this as well and we take a look you can see these heavy swells of volume right here and then what's happening when we have our reaction the volumes lighter look at this heavy downward fall right here reaction volumes lighter so these are the things that you can use guys and they can really help you and right now we're actually back testing this 200 moving average which we got up above on april 6th so we really need to stay up above that we don't want to start dropping down below that then we could start getting in trouble because that will start acting as overhead resistance then on us and guys that's how it flips remember so old support if it's broken down through now is going to act as old resist or new resistance old support becomes new resistance and vice versa so that's where it's tough but the trend is down now and you don't want to go against the trend you can get in so much trouble going against the trend and that's why I want to bring this stuff to you guys I hope I can save you money I hope I can have you look at the market in a little bit different way that's my main goal here so if you get some from that guys you like me covering Litecoin part of the Litecoin family smash that thumbs up button and we're gonna move on to Ethereum next and let me know what you guys are doing right now are you in positions are you hodling did you stay through the trend line break are you looking for a good opportunity I really want to know what you all are doing and what you're looking at so in terms of ethereum we're at 153 right now so let's take a look at this so ethereum we're looking at that purple trend line right in here we have broken down through our purple trend line let's actually put that in yellow just so you can see it a little bit better because we have all our overhead resistances in purple 
So right there, you can see we have started to break down through that now, and this is on the four-hour time frame. So to the upside, we need to get up above $165. That's going to be key for us. Get up above that, then it'd be challenging 174. Those are going to be the upside targets if we can move to the upside, guys. But right now, still, you could draw a trend line right on here. We're in a downtrend, okay, short-term downtrend that we need to change. But right now, we really need to hold, we'll call it $152. If $152 doesn't hold, then I'm going to be looking down at about $140. And I'm going to put an alert right here on our 200 moving average on the 4-hour time frame. We're going to add an alert there because that may be just a quick little bounce area that we could get. So I'd look at that. And then the next area I would really pay probably close attention to would be down around that $124. But guys, you know, we're just in a tough spot right now. When you start seeing trend line breaks, they can be extremely important. And a lot of people, you know, they don't pay attention to them. And even from the one hour time frame all the way to the one week time frame, they can be extremely effective. Obviously, the longer time frame, the more effective they can be. But when we start seeing things and dropping down through this, apart from some manipulation that could step in and do something crazy, the technicals are showing down right now. And you don't want to try to buck the trend. Same deal here. You could draw a trend line up in here. The trend is down. And overall, guys, you know, you step back and you take a look at this. Look at all these lower highs that have been continuously coming in. Right here. Here is our overall high. We almost made it to $1,500, guys. Look at where we're at right now. Lower high, lower high, lower high. And if that was another lower high, and then we could have lower lows. But it's so important for us to stay up above Guys, in about $84, because past $84, there's not much support there. You can see how we almost went straight up here. So that's why this area is so critical. And maybe this will be some type of double bottom and we can keep moving. But right now, overall, on the one day, guys, the trend is down. You don't want to buck the trend. This is a, a, a difficult spot to be in right now. If you're in a position, it would be a terrible spot, in my, my opinion, to want to just jump in right now. Unless you're just long-term dollar cost averaging. That's a whole different ball game than what I do. I'm a short-term trader, a swing trader. I've told you guys that. That's what I like to do in this market. That's what I feel most comfortable with. I don't want to hold through things like this because think about it guys you buy down at this bullish engulfing candle you buy at $134 you ride it all the way up to $283 you keep hodling and look where you're at now I mean it, it, you, you bought over here at $134 you could have taken all this profit and you've sat down all the way through you know a, a move down to $89 now you're hoping that we can get back up and I don't want to hope in this market I want to take control capital is the number one thing Capital preservation is the number one thing. If you have the capital, then you can make the moves and you can, you can learn from your mistakes. But if you blow your whole account on one move, then or it, or it halves and half, guys, that's where you get in trouble. And as every book I read, I was reading last night, Japanese candlestick charting book. I had a little bit of time to myself. I was reading, and it was all about capital preservation and staying in the game and the risk to reward. That's what you really want to pay most attention to. So that's what I want to leave you with today, guys. Overall, I'm going to leave you with analysis. It's bearish. The trend is down. Apart from getting some type of manipulation bounce right now, things aren't looking the most beautiful, and we're starting to have that heavier volume coming in to the downside. So that's where we need to be very careful. We need to pay attention, and that's where, guys, just really guard your capital. So... I'm so happy to be back with you today. Awesome. I missed you the last two days. But, you know, if you could, guys, if you could like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, even write something, you know, good video or give me a thumbs up or anything like that. It really helps with the algorithm to get me out there and uh, see if we can help as many people as possible, guys. Appreciate you all being here with me today. God bless you all.